Matthew 22, verse 15. And these all run together. And what we, we just talked about the parable of the king having the wedding supper for his son. And the, the nation of Israel has rejected it. And it was a parable, and the king went out, destroyed, and we saw that in history. We saw that in 70 AD, and it's coming again. Verse 15 in Matthew 22, then went the Pharisees. Now, if you remember the parable the other day that we talked about, the parable of the vineyard, Israel, Isaiah. And he says, you know, the, the God sent forth his servants. They killed one. They maimed another, another, Hebrews 11. And you remember that they said, you know, the parable is about us. Then went the Pharisees, a religious group, took counsel. They got together how they might entangle him in his talk. So, all right, here we go. This is actually what's happening. What they're trying to do is they're trying to trick Jesus, that if he says something, we got him. And, and this would be the thing, you know, the old cop movies. You know, they bring the guy in the room, they know they got the lights, and they got the stay. We're waiting for you to say one thing, and we got you. That's what a judge would try to do. That's what, you know, they try to do in the court. They get you talk so much, talk so much, talk so much. Aha. And the more you talk, the more you're going to reveal yourself. And the best thing in life is, here is my advice, never tell a lie. Because if you tell a lie, you don't have to remember. Where if you tell a lie, it's, it's, you know, somebody will question you, oh, what did I say? What was it? I don't remember. Oh. You always remember the truth. Now, Jesus never lies. The Bible says God never lies, cannot lie, will not lie, ever lies. So we don't need to worry about that. So what they're going to do is they're going to try to catch you. Here we go. The next few nights, here we go. They sent out unto him their, their disciples. Well, that's quite interesting now. They have disciples. Jesus has disciples. Everything that God has, the devil has an imitation. God has a Christ. The devil has an antichrist. God has a city. Satan has a city. God has a religion. Satan has a religion. God has angels. Satan has angels. Jesus has disciples. Satan has disciples. With the Herodians. Now the Herodians, get this, know this, are Jewish or Hebrews that are in complete favor of the Herod reign of Rome. If we were to bring this up to date today and anger Christians, they would be called the Trumpisms. The ones in favor that love Donald Trump. Or Republicans. There is nobody better than Republicans. And that's what these Hebrews are. They're, you know what? This rule of the Romans, these rules of the Caesars, the Herods, hey, this is the way to go. And that's funny because they're Jews in favor of Gentiles. Saying, Master, which means Rabbi, it's not a authority uh, word of God, it's a, you're a Rabbi. Remember Jesus said, call no man master, call no man rabbi, call no man father. Master, we would say mister, we would say doctor, uh, reverend. We know, okay, that settles it, doesn't it? Take somebody of authority. You're sitting behind a doctor's desk, and doctor says, he looks at your chart, your x-ray, he says, we know, okay. How about, this happens to me a lot of times, you come home as a kid and your mom's standing right there and say, I know. Uh-oh. Okay, what do you know? How much do you know? 
You know? How about, how about if your boss came? We know! <laughs> oh, boy. Where do I sign the paper? You know? We know! That thou art true. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Look at that. Look at that. You can know that Jesus is true and still be lost and go to hell. Because that's where they go. And teach us the way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. They know he is true. They know he teaches. They still die and go to hell. Oh, yeah, Jesus is a good teacher. Yeah, Jesus, yeah, he told the truth all the time. And then end up in hell. Thou teachest the way of God. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. What more? What more can you get out of John chapter 14, verse 6, than when these guys say it here? And these guys will die and go to hell. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No man has access to God but by me. <clears throat> there are people who can spend the whole entire life in church and still end up in hell. Neither carest thou for any man. Now, you would think in that one right there, well, you know, Jesus doesn't care for anybody. Well, what about all the healing? What about all the devils? That's not thou carest for any man. What they would say is, here we go, here we go, he's going to do it, he's going to say it, he's going to get me in trouble, he's going to get me mad. Jesus today would say, I don't care about the Republicans, I don't care about the Democrats, I don't take any side. It would be, I don't care if you're color, I don't care if you're African, I don't care if you're Polish, I don't care if you're American, I don't care if you're Russian, I don't, I don't care if you're Ukraine. Whatever you call somebody Ukraine, Ukrainian or whatever. I don't care if you got religion. I don't care if you got religion. Jesus doesn't have any regard to any particular class, color, race, whatever, a man. He wouldn't care less for Republicans and Democrats. And yet that in sport. He wouldn't care for any team. Let's bring that one up. Politics and sports seems to overpower the, the, the church house. You go to church. You see last night's football game? Wasn't it great? Wasn't the baseball game and all that? And Jesus says, as far as all that, who cares? There's no footballs. There's no baseball in heaven. Only souls that have trusted in me. That's what I care. Paul says, I'd rather hear about Jesus. All right? So neither cares, but no. He doesn't put favoritism. For thou regardest not the person of men. In other words, Rabbi, doctor, mister, missus. Jesus does not favor anybody of whatever they are, whether it be the Rams or the Dolphins or the, the blue shirts, the red shirts, the yellow shirts, or whatever party. And as far as it goes here, it would be you Roman? Oh. Yeah, so you Caesar? Yeah, so. Centurion? Yes. So? Oh. There's only one group of people that God does favor. There's only one group of people that God has his eyes set upon. The apple of his eye, that's the nation of Israel. That's kind of funny because these are Jews in favor of the Roman government. You don't care. Yes, he does care for people. They're lying. He cares for the nation of Israel. He came onto his own. His own received them not. So they are lying. He's told, go into the, the cities of the Jews. Don't go to the Gentiles. So they're lying. You're going to set forth to, to entrap God, Jesus, while doing the method of Satan, the father of lies. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere, buddy. So tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? It's not what you think. What does the scripture say? What does God say? You're asking God. I'm not Jehovah Witness. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. So when you're talking to Jesus, you're saying, God, what saith you? I don't care what you think. 
I don't care if you favor this team or these group of people. I don't care what you think about it. Give me the facts. Give me the truth. You just said Jesus is the truth. Now what we'll think is that? Many people think and end up in hell. Many people think and discourage God. Is it lawful, is it right, is it legal to give tribute, a tax, a levy on the season? Now what it is, what this tribute is, Rome has imposed upon the Hebrews, the Jews, the Israel, a tax. Uh, we would get great honor in America if all these illegal immigrants came to this nation and we put a tribute to them. All right, you cross the borders, it costs you X amount of money. That's a tribute. They would stop crossing the borders when we put a tribute on them. But you know what America does, and this is five cents, it doesn't cost you anything. Instead of putting a tribute on it, we give them freeness, free stuff. Here in Florida, we, we get the Cubans and we get the Puerto Ricans here, and they instantly go on Social Security disability. We give them the tribute for coming into our country. We do it half-ass or donkey, whatever you are. So is it right, is it legal for, for Caesar, Rome, who they adore, being Herodians, they're all for Caesar, or not. So Jesus, we are of and for the Roman government. How about you? How about you? What do you think about getting Caesar money? Now they would be all for it. So Jesus, what do you think? Now here's the thing. You know Jesus has always got a multitude, right? So here's here here's the problem. If Jesus says yes, he's got everybody mad at him. Because everybody just loves taxes, don't they? So if Jesus says yes, he's angered the mob, and you, you, they would they would crucify him. They would get stones and crucify him. Okay? They tried it a couple times already. Have you read in the Old Testament all the times that the Jews were going to kill somebody, the prophets, and did? All right, so if Jesus said yes, you got a mob, a riot. Okay? If Jesus said no, these men who adore Caesar, the Roman government, would run to Caesar, would run to Herod and say, hey, you know what Jesus just said? No, what? He says it's wrong to give you money. What do you mean? Well, you know that tribute? Yeah. Jesus said no. Now you got a re re rebellion, you got a revolt. You got an insurrection, by the way, which was Barabbas who was set free. Who someone died in that insurrection, like Donald Trump and his group of people, January 16th or whatever that was. That was extra money and cost you nothing. So, yes, mob rule, no government rule. Either way, Jesus is in trouble. How's that? How's that for you put me on the spot? But Jesus, I love that, but God, but Jesus. Precede their wickedness. Uh, uh, okay, it's, it's a setup. And th this wasn't a question. Oh, okay, here's the question. This was planned. And said, why tempt ye me? Imagine them tempting God. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. I wonder if there's going to be questions like this at the Great White Zone Judgment. I don't know. Ye hypocrites. Now, why would Jesus say hypocrites? There's one or two ways. Maybe more. You can put them in the comments. Number one, they don't pay 
to tribute to Caesar because they back the Roman government. They are tax exempt like your churches today. I said they're tax exempt like your Baptist churches today. I mean, your guy next door, the guy next door to your church who has a land, who has grass, who has property, he has to pay taxes on all his property. You sit there and you have no taxes like the Roman Catholic Church. Don't you tell me. Jesus was for paying taxes. I, I'll give you the, I'll give you whatever, the, the, the spoiler code, whatever they call that. I believe in my heart that the church leadership is going to stand the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to be found foul for tax exempt. You know who had tax exempt in the Bible? Pharaoh's religion. Joseph said they are were exempt for paying money for the corn. They had their lands. Their lands were not sold. Their lands were not given up. They had their lands and they had the food by Pharaoh, the religion of Egypt. Your Baptist church and your tax revolt, your tax exemption is of the Egyptians like Esther and Mary Christ Mass. By the way, we're talking about Rome, Roman Catholic Church. They go into the nation and they put a vow of poverty. With their big fat dopey popey cokey sitting on a big throne with his pope mobile with a bullet shoe and, and you can fire a missile at that in the beats of the president and you can't blow up either one. How can the president and the pope have vehicles that you can't explode? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Ever see what Washington DC looks like? It looks like Rome. It looks like it Italy with the columns and all that. And a big fat president sitting up on the Air Force Corps seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, you don't like me preaching, do you? But here we go. Okay, number two, hypocrites. They're Jewish. They are going against the Jewish government. Didn't the law say they were to have a Jewish king, Jewish God, Jehovah? They were supposed to have the Gentiles over them. They're in violation of the Jewish law. Ooh. So he goes on, show me the tribute money. Show me, show me the money. You're getting to a point today, I'm dealing with my daughter and her job and all that. We got no more money. It's all in bank. It's all in a card. It's all in electronic. All they got to do is one day, oh, look, I got a big fat check. You know what they have to do one day in America? All right, hit that off switch. Where's my bank? Where's my time card? Where's my money? Sorry, off. You really think your passcodes and your ID, you really think nobody knows what you're typing? Yeah, I bet you they do. Homeland Security. That was five cents. Um, is that 15 cents now? You can send cash, check, or money over to me. Show me the tribute money. Show me the tax money. In America, it will be the 1040 form. How you will charge American taxpayers what you give to your church. Really? Look at the money I, I, I gave to charity. After you claim it on your IRS, you didn't get nothing. You gave it to the government, and I ended up paying for it. I have never, I have never, I have never, never put in any of my money to any charity, any church, any missionary on a tax form. Never. The church will give me an envelope. I say, well, what's it? That's your tithe and offering. I come home, and I put it in the shredder. I don't even open it. I think it's a sin to put what you give to the church on your 1040 or whatever form you use. Show me the tribute money. That was 15 That was fifteen cents. Now you owe me 30 cents. They brought unto him a penny. Remember that penny in the vineyard that cost one day's wage? That's one day wage right there. You think you pay high tax? He said unto them, Who is this image and superscription on it? 
And they said George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Franklin. I don't know how Benjamin Franklin made it there. Thomas Jefferson. Theodore Roosevelt. Susan B. Anthony. Alfred E. Newman. He looks at the coin and says, okay, whose picture is on it? Whose writing is on it? And they said Caesar's. You got Caesar's face, and you got the inscription in Rome. Or, it, or Latin, whatever. Then says he, Jesus, unto them. Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. So, According to Jesus, you're well you used to hold, but if you're holding a bill, a currency in your hand, whatever it is, this is my money, and I earned it. Oh no, 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 it's not. Whose whose picture is it on? You know, we are the only nation in the world where there are dead people in our money. You know what? England had just had to do in Canada. They had to reprint their money because Queen Elizabeth died. Now they have to put King Charles the Third picture on it. They don't have dead men and dead women on their currency. America does. Go look at the money. All of it is dead people. That money belongs to George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin. It don't belong to you, according to Jesus. You didn't print it. The government printed it. You don't take it with you when you go to heaven. The pharaohs tried that. The pharaohs put everything in their tombs. It's still in their tombs if it's not in museums today. Unto God the things that are God. What's that for the church? It's gospel tracts, Bible reading, prayers, hymns, people who got saved by you planting or watering. God gives the increase, but you get the reward. You helping other Christians. You helping other, other ministries and Christians with money. You helping your church with Offerings and tithes. That's God's. Yeah, sweeping the floor, mowing the grass. Well, I mean, you know how I said about but you're doing that for the Lord's service. That's God. But what you put in your billfold, that's the government's. And if the government flips that switch and you have no more money tomorrow, don't cry and complain. Jesus said, hey, that's the government. They can do what they want with it. And you people out there, you tea partiers, you Republicans, you have the right for a gun, you, you, oh, 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 oh. you don't read your Bible. You don't understand your Bible. Why don't you just shut up? I hate you, Stalin. All right, you just tell God, tell Jesus, the judge seat of Christ, when I get the, the gold, silver, precious stones, and your money burns up, wood. Your pet food burns up, hay. And your stubble is complete loss. Uh, the football games, the baseball teams, and the cars that go left, 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 left. I turned to right and caused an accident. Can I add? Can I add twenty-five cents to this, please? I live here at Daytona 500 and all that. I, I see these people come down here with the race, the, the 400, the, 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 the 500 race and all that. You know, with your mobile homes and all that, you look like an idiot. You out there, your bare shirt, you, you look as ugly as anything, drinking your beer, watching people go left, 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 left. It rained. We'll have to finish this next week when you can't come back. You're an idiot. You're truly an idiot. If that's your life, a bunch of people are going to laugh, 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 and I got to buy his shirt because he's one of the great, and that guy won't even show up at your funeral. That guy don't even know who you are. I, I had to add that. I know I made you upset, but that's okay. You're an idiot. Why don't you put your life to Jesus who goes right 
all the way. When they heard these words, they marveled like, that didn't work. Now think about these If it's Caesar's, give it to Caesar's. If it's God, bring it to God. Where do these guys stand? He called them hypocrites. What if they don't pay Caesar? What if they get exempt from Caesar? God just told them, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. These men who are against God, who are going against God, Jesus Christ, here goes Rachel, and her cat. She made a star there. God has just told them, Jesus was God. Give unto God the things are God. They're not, they don't have anything for God. If they are exempt by Caesar, being Herodians, if, they are definitely exempt by God because they don't have anything. What Jesus just told them is, you have nothing to give at all. And that's where they stand in hell today. They have nothing. They marveled and left him. <laughs> uh -oh. Well, that was a waste of time. And went their way. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here, here's a hard thing. Ready? They're going to stand at the great white throne judgment. Now watch. Verse 16. They sent out unto them their disciples, which Herodians say. All right, this is what they said. Master, we know that thou art true. Amen. That teaches the way of God in truth. See, teaches the way of God. Look at verse 22. And they went their way. They're going to stand before God one day, Jesus, again. Well, why, are you, why are you throwing me into hell? You said I was teaching the way of truth, right? Yeah, God. Well, you went your way. You didn't go God's way. Their own mouth is going to testify against them. We're not done. We're not done. Chapter 22, verse 15. And they went to Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him with, their, with his talk. Go back to 22. And they heard these words. They marveled, left him, and went there. They are going to be entangled by their own words. You see, the thing is, and Luke says, and I didn't write it down as always, or Matthew, you're going to be judged by your words. Do you realize Jesus Christ is not going to say nothing to great white on judgment? Except for depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Your own mouth is going to condemn. Your own ways are going to condemn. And he's going to call forth Christians. I never had the opportunity to get saved. Uh, Joe Smith, come here. You know this party? Yes, I do, sir. Can you tell me what you did December 18th? Uh, 1983 at 7 p.m. Well, well, yeah. You know, we're going to remember all that. I was sitting in a toilet going potty, God, at the Walmart. And what'd you do? Well, I left the gospel track when I, you know, got dressed and left. Okay. Sir, did you go in the bathroom at 810? Yeah. Did you see that piece of paper there? Yeah, I glanced through it. All right, you know. Jesus Christ, you can't throw me into hell. How dare you throw me into hell? Uh, Mary Jones, you want to come up here? Yeah. Who's this guy? Oh, I worked with him. Oh. And, oh, I used to try to open the Bible with him. He didn't want to hear it. You know, he, he put ketchup on my Bible, whatever, you know. Whatever. Uh -huh. What do you guys say to that, sir? Your own words, your own actions are going to condemn you. It'd be very hard at the great white throne judgment to realize that you condemned yourself. Why didn't you get saved? All right, play it back. 
Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, man. You're an idiot. Why don't you shut up? Take the religion in church. Okay, depart from me. You work with iniquity. I didn't. Depart from me, you. Your own mouth is going to condemn you. 